First story. Homophobic Mill tries to kill OP and her own son to end their relationship. My husband and me, we are a gay couple. It's probably not that common to see gay people in this sub, but I've got a Mill too, and the relationship with her is so strained that I cannot help but talk about it. I'd also like to apologize for my English. It's not my first language, so there might be some mistakes. We've been married for two years. When we met, my husband was heavily depressed because of Mills' constant pressure to find a girl, marry, and start a family as soon as possible. She didn't care that he's very young. She didn't care that he wanted to get an education first. Her only concern was that you've got a job, and now you must have a family. Nothing else matters. Just find a girl, marry her, and have babies. My husband, and I have an age gap of 11 years. Now he's 22 and I'm 33. But when we met, he was 20 and I was 31. That's why we kind of started as friends, because I was unsure whether something more was possible due to our age difference. However, as time went by, we realized that we're falling in love. There's nothing we can do about it, and honestly, that age gap has never been a problem for us. We dated in secrecy for two years. He was staying at my place often, which led Mill to think that he had found a bride. My husband was like, Yes mom, I've got someone I love. And Mill was like, Well great, then bring her over so I can judge whether she's the right choice. Even if he was straight, that's a messed up thing to say, as she obviously meant that he can only marry her if Mill approves it. Then my husband told me that he was tired of hiding, that he wanted us to marry, and then he would come out to Mill. I was happy to hear it because I was getting tired of hiding too. We married the same way we dated in secrecy. We only had a handful of good friends there with us, and the next day, my husband and I both went to visit his mother to tell her the truth. Even though my husband warned me beforehand that it might get ugly, I was still hoping that his mother would support her son, as he's her child after all. Fast forward to meeting Mill. It did get ugly more ugly than I could even imagine. First, she thought we were joking, and when she realized we weren't, she got livid. I've heard many homophobic things in my life, but I had never met a person who was more homophobic than she was. You've got HIV, don't you? Oh no, you're not a SHT pusher. There are no such abnormalities in our family. Where the hell did you get it from? Two men cannot be a couple, that's bullshit. You need to see a psychiatrist. All these arguments and many more made me feel as if we were still living in the Middle Ages. She slapped my husband several times, and when I pushed him behind me to defend him, she slapped me as well. She cursed me and cursed her son, telling him that he's not her son anymore and won't be until he refuses this lewd lifestyle, and yelled at us to get out of her house, which we gladly did. First, we thought about going to the police and reporting Mill for assaulting us. But then we realized that we could not prove it, no witnesses, no cameras, nothing. My husband was very upset because I come from a big family. I've got three brothers and two sisters. I've got aunts and uncles. And I've got a bunch of cousins. He doesn't. He doesn't have a father. He doesn't have siblings. And his mother is basically his only relative. Of course, now he's a part of my family. But still, hearing your own mother say such things to you is really hurtful. A few days passed, and then my husband received a call from Mill. It seemed that she had calmed down and was able to talk to him in a civilized manner. She visited him at his job, but my husband was wrong when he thought that she was going to accept us. Once again, she tried to convince him that that's all nonsense, that our feelings aren't real, and that she had found a good doctor who could cure him of this. Of course, my husband refused to see any doctors because homosexuality is not a disease and no medically educated doctor would say a cure is necessary. And then she asked my husband what I'm doing for a living and what's my profession. And he told her that I'm a firefighter. Suddenly she seemed a lot happier and she was like, oh then it's not so bad after all. My husband asked her why my job would change her thoughts about me and she was like, well, it's a dangerous job. Firefighters often have many accidents. Maybe he'll burn up one day. Like, how evil do you have to be to wish that for another person? 
Obviously, she hates me the most because I'm the eldest, and she believes that I've messed up her son. I got to talk to her when she arrived at our house. Unfortunately, she knows where we live because she followed my husband home one day, which is another twisted thing. She told me to leave her son alone, that he's not gay, that this is all my doing, and that she'll do everything in her power to separate us. I advised her to educate herself about homosexuality, as she's clearly very ignorant, and I couldn't convince her that I'm not after a quick fling with her son. I love him and want to spend the rest of my life with him. I told her that two years ago she had led her son to depression with her bugging him about girls and not letting him live his life. She was like, I was just making sure he doesn't forget that he has some obligations in this life. WTF, since marriage is an obligation. I also reminded her that she wished me dead. I haven't forgotten it. And she was like, you deserve more than dead, you pedophile. I honestly don't know how or why that came across because my husband has never been underage when dating me. Last night, she tried to break into our house. I don't know why, but it was obviously her. In the middle of the night, we were awoken by our dog barking and someone banging at our front door. Someone was jerking the doorknob for a good while. We didn't answer the door, of course, but my first thought was that it's Mill. When the morning came and we were leaving for work, the first thing I saw when I opened the door were many notes taped to it. They were all typed on the computer, and they all had the same content horrible things to me. There was my name and things like, Die, I'm waiting for your death, you old faggot, you pedophile, I hope your DCK falls off, etc. My husband saw these notes too, and we were both sure that it was Mill because no one else would do it to us. We talked to a police officer who's a friend of ours, and he said that we should save all these notes, but actually, the police cannot do anything because she hasn't actually physically attacked us. As long as those are just words, they can't do anything to her. Even when we told him that she hit us when we met her for the first time, he said that the main thing is proof, and if we don't have proof, then the police can't help us. We're actually thinking about moving, because we don't feel safe anymore. We don't know what else could come to her mind. It's so very sad that we live in a country that's supposed to be safe for gay people. And still there are some individuals that don't realize that it's the 21st century and that people are different. Update. Mill burned down our house and got arrested. I'm posting for the second time now. I didn't see that coming. We made a big mistake when we didn't take Mill's threats seriously enough. We thought that she'd be like a dog that barks but doesn't bite. Speaking of dogs, the only hero in this story is actually our dog. Heavens bless our dog. It happened at night. My husband and I were heavy sleepers were dreaming sweet dreams and didn't notice anything. If our dog hadn't jumped on our bed and barked, waking us up, we would probably both be dead now. I'm a firefighter myself, and I realized that the fire was too big already. We couldn't put it out by ourselves. We escaped through the window, fortunately unharmed. Somebody had called the firefighters who happened to be my colleagues, which was a weird situation. It was the first time they had to work on their buddy's house. They tried to work as fast and efficiently as they could, but our house is damaged beyond repair. We can't live in it anymore. Mill got caught and basically dug her own grave because she herself said that she was hoping till the last minute that her son would come to his senses break up with me, and start to date women. But he didn't. And she felt ashamed that she had created such a deformed human being. So she decided that it was better to have no son than a gay son. She basically said she wanted to kill him. So even though at first what happened was classified as arson with the intent to damage the property, which would mean a softer sentence, after those words it became arson with the intent to endanger life and that means much more severe punishment, even up to life imprisonment. Our lawyer said that most likely she will not receive the maximum sentence because no one has died, but she will receive at least a couple years behind bars. And there's not much her lawyer can do to help her because she confessed, and she said such a stupid thing. Well, but my son's faggot husband is a firefighter. Why didn't he save his house? In the middle of the night, just awoken. No gear, no tools, no equipment, 
caught completely unaware by the fire. Are you serious, Mill? You think that just because I'm a firefighter means I can put the fire out with my bare hands? Many people think that house fire is like what they see in the movie's flames and light. But actually, it is a complete darkness. The smoke makes the room so dark within minutes that you can't even see your own hands. A house fire is always like a dark night. Now we're living with our friends while we find another place to live. Our clothing, our documents, passports, marriage certificates, everything is gone. But of course, those are just things. We can buy them again. We're alive. That's the most important thing. My husband is done with her. He's so upset that his own mother wishes him dead just because he's gay. Before this, he still hoped that their relationship could be fixed. But now he doesn't want to hear a single word about her anymore. Her homophobic hate almost killed us. And it is our own fault as well, because we didn't give her actions and words the seriousness they deserved. We know some gay people who also have homophobic parents, but they have never tried actually killing their children. I guess that's why we didn't think that it might happen to us. Comment from OP in response to a question about whether their dog made it out. Yes, he did. We got him out of the house before ourselves. Second story. Entitled Mill tries to wear a white dress at OP's wedding and gets destroyed by OP's family. I'm so confused. Please help. I'm getting married soon. And we're having a traditional wedding I'm Indian. My fiancé isn't. But he was fine with having an Indian wedding. My mill asked me if she could wear white to our wedding. I said sure. And now my fiancé is really mad at me. He says she is going to try to steal the spotlight and she'll definitely show up wearing a long white dress. And it was very irresponsible of me to just agree like that. The thing is, one I'm not going to be wearing a white bridal dress. I'll be wearing a traditional dress that, due to the design lehenga, type of silk and embroidery, is very distinctive. So even if my mill does wear a white wedding dress, it's not like it'll be the same. Also, this may be dumb, but I don't really get what the big deal is if my mill wears white even if I was also going to. As long as the groom doesn't get confused and marry the wrong person, how does it matter? Sorry if this is dumb, but my fiancé is really upset that I didn't stop my mill and I just need some help understanding. I didn't mean to upset him. Edit. My fiancé knows what my wedding dress looks like. He has seen it. Edit too. For those asking if Mill knows how my wedding dress looks, I'm not sure. We have discussed what the wedding will be like she hasn't been to an Indian wedding before, but I don't think we explicitly discussed what I will be wearing. I feel like she was confused when I said she was free to wear white. But that might be me projecting because the whole conversation was a bit confusing for me. Some comments that seem to be spot on. Based on OP's fiancé's reaction. I'm guessing Mill has a history of inappropriate and or attention-seeking behavior. And he's trying to break that cycle. OP should talk to her fiancé to get on the same page. And maybe going forward. Tell Mill she has to run things by him. But see... I think her dealing with thinking she got one over just to discover the bride in red would be glorious. Upstage the upstager. I think OP's fiancé should totally lean into that. Pretend nothing is wrong, act unimpressed, etc. Yeah, I'm guessing from this post that Mill has never been to an Indian wedding and has no idea what she's in for. You've got to wake up pretty early in the morning if you want to upstage an Indian wedding party. I went to a Hindu wedding years ago. OMG, the fabrics, the jewelry, the gold. It was opulent. White is really not going to stand out the way she thinks it will. I don't understand what mothers, mills, or other wedding attendees think they are going to accomplish by wearing white to a wedding. Steal attention from the bride. Have people come up to them and ask if they are the bride, coyly telling them no while blushing and giggling. IMO, the only attention someone other than the bride wearing white to a wedding would get is ridicule. Or maybe concern for their mental health. Confused Bride later posts these updates. So, as you all suggested, I talked to my fiancé about why he was concerned. He explained that his mother had previously joked that she would wear white. 
and he had told her point blank that she wasn't allowed to do this. He didn't tell me about this because he didn't want to stress me out. Apparently, she has had a tendency to steal attention throughout his childhood, which left some trauma. So basically, when I told Mill she could wear white, he was very upset that I had given permission when he had categorically refused. But he admitted it was wrong of him to get that upset when he hadn't shared any of the background information with me. We agreed that going forward, we would be better about communicating and making up. But then he wanted me to call up Mill and tell her she couldn't wear white or else she was banned from the wedding. Which I didn't really want to do, because that sounded like a surefire recipe for open hostility. And like I said earlier, I don't actually have a problem with Mill wearing white. I told him that he was welcome to tell her if he wanted. But he was insisting I have to tell her, because I was the one who gave permission. It was starting to turn into an argument, so I showed him this post and all of your great advice. This really helped. It helped him realize that even if Mill wore white, it wouldn't really stand out at least not in a positive way. And he loved your guy's idea of just not telling Mill that I wasn't going to be wearing white. So we'll probably offer to buy her a sari. But if she insists on wearing a white dress, we just won't stop her. Thank you to everyone who gave advice. I'll try to update after the wedding. The latest post is from Confused Bride's fiancé's perspective which shows the more serious side of things. Update from Confused Bride's old fiancé. Given the way things turned out, it seemed fitting that I post this. I'm the previous poster's then fiancé. After Pia not her real name posted, a lot of commenters said I was wrong for not dealing with my mother myself, and I was especially wrong for getting mad at Pia without telling her anything. I didn't want to admit it, but the more comments I read, the harder it was to brush it off. I don't have a good relationship with my mother. She was the type to demand gifts on my birthday because I wouldn't be here without her. For 18 years, I never got to open presents myself. Looking back, every event, from my games to graduation, was always about her. I always felt like my life and achievements were just extensions of her university's farthest accomplishments. I think I suppressed my resentment because everyone around me always acted like this was normal. I didn't know how to cope with this, so I just tried to get as far away from her as possible. I applied to the farthest university I could realistically get into and stayed far away, because any time I had to go back home, it was the same story. At university, I was lucky enough to meet Pia, and for the first time, I started to like who I was. I didn't feel like I had to hide or play down my accomplishments or even my failures. And her family was so warm and welcoming. It felt like my childhood was just a nightmare of the past. I thought the best way to move past it was to just move ahead. I thought I would be able to handle it now as an independent adult. After all, everyone says you're supposed to let sleeping dogs lie. And in my worst moments, I felt jealous of my wonderful fiancé for having such a welcoming, loving family, even though they were treating me like one of their own. I was ashamed of my mother's behavior and the ugliness of my resentment, so I pretended everything was fine and invited my parents to my wedding. Until this post blew up, I don't think I really understood how important my wedding was to me. I mean obviously, getting married to the girl of my dreams is huge, but I mean the actual details of the whole ceremony. I actually had a really clear vision of what I wanted in the wedding, but a combination of my childhood trauma and the notion that the wedding is the bride's day and not something men are supposed to care about made me unable to express it. I also didn't understand how badly I wanted an event that would be about me and not my mother. This unholy cocktail of repressed and suppressed feelings led to me unfairly lashing out at Pia when my mother tried her old tricks. At that moment, I forgot white wasn't the bridal color in Indian weddings. I just felt a cold sweat that another precious moment would be hijacked by my mother. I think Pia was shocked by my outburst because she had never seen me like this and made that post just to get some perspective. Neither of us imagined the ramifications it would have. I read every comment at least ten times. I couldn't stop thinking about it. Unwanted memories kept invading my head. No matter how much I tried to bury my head in work, 
or exhaust myself by exercising. I ended up having an actual meltdown that night. I was sobbing and crying. It was probably my ugliest moment. The next morning, I half expected to wake up alone and get a text that the wedding was off. Instead, incredibly, Pia stayed with me. She convinced me to go to therapy, encouraged me through those first few hellish sessions, and gave me space when I needed it. Therapy really helped. I was able to understand why I was feeling angry and upset and how to deal with it beyond just trying to ignore it. I apologized to Pia earlier, but it let me actually be honest with her about my family. It really transformed our relationship. I took over the wedding preparation with the help of my in-laws. This turned out to be great for all of us. I got to actually design my dream wedding. My mill later told me she was really relieved that we switched because my lovely Pia didn't really care which way about the colors or flowers and had virtually no input on any of it as long as we were getting married. You might have realized from her post that she is a pretty nonchalant and easygoing person. She used to joke that she was fine with just exchanging garlands and calling it a day. My mill was also very encouraging and patient in letting me voice my input. And she even found things I didn't know but loved, like riding a horse to the ceremony. We have a running joke that I seem more like her son than Pia because our tastes are so similar. And the actual wedding went really, really beautifully. Pia was ready to rescind my parents' invitations completely after everything. But her terrifying little sister suggested we invite anyway as a final sort of F you to show them I wasn't alone anymore and no matter what they tried this time, things would go my way. I have to admit that did appeal to me, so we decided to invite them for the third day of the ceremony and it worked even better than I imagined. First, it helped that my mother had no real idea what an Indian wedding is like. So when she showed up in a long white tull ball gown, security actually thought she had the wrong address and didn't let her in. This was actually something I didn't plan, but the schadenfreude of seeing my mother fuming by the gate while other guests were let in was delicious. Secondly, compared to the embroidered silks and sleek satins of Indian clothes, my mother's ball gown honestly looked frumpy. Instead of stealing the show, she just looked like she didn't belong. This was accented by the jewelry, the matching churi and kungan, and the earrings and bindies worn compared to her much more sparse look. Pia looked especially beautiful in her red lenga coli, with intricate henna covering her hands and feet. I'm probably biased since she's my wife, but she has the most beautiful inkai hair, and it looked stunning adorned with gadra and gold bilai on her braid. Indian brides also wear something called a matha patti, which looks like a crown. It definitely made her look like a princess. I actually forgot about my parents, my insecurity, and pretty much the rest of the universe because I couldn't stop staring at her. Then my mother tried really hard to interrupt the ceremony. First she tried coughing, but luckily Pia's aunt sitting next to her gave her a cough drop. Then she tried to initiate a conversation. But Pia's five-year-old niece loudly said in that high-pitched voice of children that really projects. Don't you know it's rude to talk during weddings? I'm five, and I know that. I later learned that she had been coached to respond this way by my wonderful, terrifying Sil. The third time she tried to interrupt Pia's cousin who had also been coached by Sil. She jumped and loudly whispered that the food didn't seem to agree with my mother, and she needed to go to the bathroom immediately. I'm sure you can guess the implication and basically pushed her away. After that, she stayed embarrassedly quiet for the rest of the ceremony. Throughout all this, the Pandechi never missed a beat, and everyone else acted like she wasn't there. In the after-party, the difference between my mother and everyone else was unpleasantly accented by her ignorance of Bollywood Tollywood dance skills, so she tried to refocus attention through conversation. She turned to my mother-in-law and started to complain about how hard it was to raise me. My mill, bless her heart, said. However difficult children are, they bring ten times as much happiness just by growing. Your son is such a wonderful young man. You must be so proud of him. My mother didn't like the direction of the conversation, so she turned to Pia and asked her if she was sure she wanted to be with me. This was after we had gotten married. Pia looked at her like she was a bit slow and said, 
Why would I be marrying him if I wasn't sure? My mother loudly asked her again, if she was really sure, because I used to wet the bed. I haven't done that since I was eight. But there she was, loudly announcing it for all and sundry. At that moment I really really hated her. It felt like there was something stuck in my throat, but no words came out. But Pia didn't have that problem. You must be confused, she said, and it was so confident with a touch of concern that my mother looked like she was actually confused. Then she raised her voice so it could be heard over the music. Dear my mother, I know we are family now, but it's much too soon right now or ever for me to hear about your bedroom activities. Then she dragged me away to the dance floor while people started to stare at my mother. Stupidly, the first thing I said at our first dance as a married couple was that my mother was right. But because I am the luckiest man alive, Pia just squeezed my hand and told me it happens when children are put under stress, and it wasn't my fault. That was pretty much the end of the problem, and I enjoyed the rest of my wedding dancing, eating food, and talking with Pia, and now my wonderful family. I did see Pia and my sister having another talk with my mother later, but I was too far away to hear anything. It couldn't have been too bad, because my sister smiled a lot, and my mother didn't try anything new for the rest of the party. By the end of the day, my mother looked incredibly constipated, but she hadn't managed to ruin anything. I felt so relieved when I said goodbye, like a weight had just slipped off my feet, and my knees felt weak. It was the first time in my life that she hadn't taken over something that was supposed to be about me. Since that day, I haven't had any more sudden, invasive memories of the past. I feel so incredibly lucky to have married this girl. And I feel like I might have done something really stupid after that fight, if I hadn't seen so many strangers telling me the same thing until I couldn't ignore it. So in case anyone was still following this, I wanted to post a thank you. Confused bride's dress. Husband said in a comment that I'm not comfortable sharing a picture, but her dress is basically a pomegranate red version of the second bride in the Bollywood movie Hum Soth Soth Hain. Forward to the 3 minute mark of this video. Video link is in the description. I recommend checking it out. It's beautiful enough to intimidate any mill. Edit 2. After googling the ornaments OP2 mentioned, I think the bride's hairstyle is also similar to the one in the video. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.